Hello, fellow van builders. Welcome back to Van Dingo. It's good to have you. Today is uh, Vinyl Plank Flooring Day. And a couple of reminders, this is a 2021 Sprinter van with dual sliders. That's right, one there, one there. And I think it makes a difference based on the directions of this life-proof um, flooring plank I'm putting down. It says, start at the end or on the wall, one, one wall and work your way in. Uh, for me, because I got dual sliders, I'm not sure I win on either side. Uh, plus, I think I want one solid plank when you step out of the shower. Um, I'm gonna put less seams there because any water that comes out of that opening maybe is easier to deal with, I'm not sure. Uh, so anyway, tools for this effort. We've got a straight edge, got an angle. Uh, certainly a measuring tape, and this is to score it and cut it. All right, by the way, here's the uh, flooring that I chose. It's a high-traffic, uh, rigid vinyl flooring, plank flooring. Uh, chose the Banff Gray Hickory. This is, this is what it looks like. And it's that locked together uh, product. This came from Home Depot. Uh, no sponsorship thing going on here, but that's uh, life proof. And, uh, you know... We're going to have, because it's Van Dingo, we're going to have some dingoes in the van. So this, you know, extreme scratch resistant was, uh, was a selling point. Forgot to also share, I bought the Life Proof um, installation kit, which gets you a couple of these. Oh, well, no more than a couple. These are the spacers that go around the, the wall. So it allows this whole thing to expand and float. Um, and this seems like a seen the online this is uh, really what helps tap tap each of the planks together so that's pretty important and they give you a, a hammering block and a nice little hammer so I already did one piece um, scored it actually on this side scored it with uh, the skill knife uh, probably two or three times because I was pushing on it and I couldn't get it to pop so I pushed down a little bit more pushed on it and popped and raised it up and it let go completely. So now this piece is gonna go all the way at the end to start the next row. Let me take you up over here to the front because I do have my next cut here. So right there where it goes longer than the plywood, we need to score that, cut it, and uh, straighten it up. So we're gonna make that cut next. All right. I'm looking down to make sure I get it as straight with that wood as I can get it. And then we're gonna score it. first practice piece I did it didn't pop off right away so I'm figuring I gotta score it a little more and I guess I could use that hammer so I'm hoping that's scored enough and I'm just gonna pop it with this hammer and it did and then pull up that's gonna need a maybe a beauty piece on there, so it doesn't have to be perfect, as I guess is what I'm thinking. Let's get this piece up here. Now this piece has to come off here too, so I'm gonna be cutting another piece. And uh, a piece that I'll use at another point. Yeah, I was getting ready to cut a long piece and um, just started thinking about the directions I'd read, went back and looked at them. You're supposed to be using your cutoff pieces, right? Because that's a straight edge right there now. So that one's ready to go. I think this is a good example of how this will click together. So we'll lift this up slightly, bring this one in, and then you lift it up, up underneath. I think 
That one's in. So I definitely now understand the pain of going against the center first. Because uh, it's fighting each other. If you started on one end and went all the way the other way, and then you're hammering against the spacers on the one wall, it's a different story. So I don't know if I'm making it harder on myself or not. Let's see. So let's lock this in first. Slide it down to this one. So this is kind of crazy. That's one box. I got two more boxes. Hmm. Plus your mind starts playing tricks with you because you're trying to think about where is the best place for the gaps, the seams? How short do I want them when I want to stare at them? You know? And I got to stop thinking about that and just lay them down. So that's what I'm going to do. Just lay them down. So check it out, making some progress. Uh, when you stare at this stuff too much and you start thinking, I gotta make this perfect like looking parquet flooring, that's when you run into trouble. So I've spent some minutes, quarter hour, half an hour, maybe an hour, hour and a half staring at this too much. Um, but here's where we're at right now and I gotta hang it up for the day because I got some other things going on, but check it out. Not bad, not, not bad. A little tight right here. I prefer not that short cut off right there, but I could always change that. That's two boxes on the ground right there. So I'm gonna throw another box on. It's supposed to be raining tomorrow, so I can do this job on the inside. Be back in a flash. All right, back at it, day two, rainy day here in North Dallas. I'm uh, making a little bit of progress. Trying not to focus too much on exactly how the planks lay down because it's a mini, or excuse me, it's a camper van. And camper vans are not precise, that's for sure. One thing I'll tell you is that when you're working with um, these vinyl planks, they don't always score exactly the way you want them to. I don't know if you can see that. So it scored all the way, and then when I snapped it, it broke along here. So now it's time for the trusty jigsaw to clean up the rest of that so we can make it usable. By the way, this stuff is sharp. This end here, I was pushing the skill knife down here, didn't slice it on the blade of the knife, and my finger went like this and I got a cut. That's why I'm wearing gloves. Should have started with gloves. Gloves is what you're supposed to do. I'm not smart enough for that, clearly. Anyway, be careful. By the way, I'm using a fine tooth uh, wood scroll blade, um, and that seems to do the job without tearing up any of the vinyl. So hopefully you can see this. There's a tongue here, and this is the underside of, I guess, the tongue going this direction. So this tongue needs to go in, and you slide it up to the piece, and when you get it close, 
you're putting this underneath the piece uh, that you're attaching to. So this goes in, slide it up, lift that one up, and then put it down precisely on top of this, and then you're gonna hammer that seam. You're gonna use a gentle, well, it's not a, you need to have a sort of a rubber mallet with the right, uh, the right kind of soft head. All right, so hopefully you can see this come together. So we're gonna slide this in. So the tongue goes in the, the groove or the tongue comes together with this one. Okay, that seems to be in. Then we're gonna lift this up. Slide this up to it. There, that's close. Bring them down. It's normal for there to be some popping, cracking here and there. And that one is in. Take the soft end of this mallet, which is the gray end. And then this block can be used on this side as an example. Bring them together. All right, so just as a reminder, for me, this walking area in front of the shower, those stones are there because I'm trying to weigh down uh, the stainless steel shower pan. When it came to me, it was torqued a bit, so I've got the, I don't know if it'll work, but I've had those laying on there. So anyway, the point is most of this floor space up here will be what we look at. Uh, let me see if I can show you this. And then over, Sorry, around on this side, as you look back, as you look back here, some might say, why are you putting, this is gonna be underneath, right? There's a garage here, a bed will be here. And actually I'm putting a uh, slide out tray uh, in here, they'll cover a lot of that. So my mismatches, I'm, I'm putting it all uniform uh, and I'm going to put the slide-in tray on top of that, but any of my mismatch pieces can go back in here in terms of uh, make them too short Not quite the coloring. I want probably overthinking it, but that's the way I'm doing it All right, so let's demonstrate this This is where we want to put our square Take our skill knife score it Keep the knife steady and the square steady, otherwise you're going to have lots of different marks on your nice vinyl plank, which you don't want. You can see that, it's nice and scored there. So, theoretically, you just snap it here, and that's a nice straight line. Then flip it over, take your shortest skill knife blade and just put it right in that angle and cut off the underlayment that's connected. And there you have it. All right, gang, it's template making time, right? So I got a really good straight edge, original straight edge from the cardboard, which I'm actually gonna flip around once I cut it and apply it here and then make, make my um, template to apply to the vinyl plank. So I just need to cut it so that it fits the trace. And I'm eyeballing it, but it's about right there. And I'm gonna tell you, this is the greatest, this is a cool tool, oscillating tool, but it's the greatest cardboard cutting tool on the planet. Just get a multi-use blade um, and away you go. I'm going to measure this off and mark it and I got my template.
can see that, but I use the same pattern as the Sprinter Van original equipment floor. So I'm gonna keep that in the mix. It'll require a little bit more of a precision cut, but that's the whole point of the template. So I'll take the straight edge side, not the side I just cut. Just here. And then we're gonna go underneath here and make a mark. pressure on it because you don't want it to move on you. All right, so I have my template here. A little messy here because it was super tight fit to get my pen up under there, but I think I got it all the way down to here and then straight out this way. I'm going to apply this on one of the sheets of vinyl. And then we're going to use a jig, jigsaw, uh, cut it out. This is the piece. And this is the down section. So it's going to go like this. All right, so I've taken the template and using a pencil, I've put it onto this piece of vinyl. And then we're gonna take the handy dandy DeWalt jigsaw and we're gonna cut this out. Simple, should be simple. I gotta get this end off of here. All right, let's see how close we got. Wow, not bad. Not bad. Come on it there, come on it there. Not bad for a home gamer that's never laid vinyl tile before. Party's not over though. All right, so this is where scrap pieces come in handy. And I got a couple here. This is a little bit lighter board. So I think, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that one. That one looks good. So the way to do that is just to line it up and then mark it. I found this on the web. Oh, sorry, Siri. Uh, we got nearly all of it. I don't know if you can see that. Missed a little piece right along here that I'm gonna, thank goodness we got a jigsaw. We can clean that up. Take much. I almost did it right there. Yeah, I 
Good. Idea. fun to check and see if it works. Yep. Flip it over. Take your blade to the smallest section. There we go. Is that you, Coco? Oh. This is entirely too wide. I wondered what we, but that's nice. Okay, so now I just need to make a mark on both sides here. Thank goodness, my lovely wife. She's got Sharpies of all colors. So, nice green one, hopefully contrasts nicely with this black underlayment. Okay, I'm not really good on my colors, but Let's try pink. See what happens with that. All right, let's see how we did. Looks pretty good. So you can see what I'm working on. I got one section here. It's got kind of a gap in it. So I'd like to take that gap out. And uh, the whole thing's moving on me, which is okay because I can move it back. I guess it's a good thing I got another, another box. Sorry, sharp in my mouth. Because I got one more plank down there at the very end. And getting ready to snap this one in. And I need some more. So, good thing. This is a four box job. It's probably three and a half. Yeah, probably four. We'll see how it goes. in all right folks uh day probably day three but uh solid work time not even half a day i don't think i wanted to show you the importance of templates so this is a template i used for the cardboard or excuse me a template i used for the um, plywood and i used it also for this cut that's going to go back up in here in addition to this long cut here so it was just a simple matter of you gotta make sure you get your logistics right is positioning this where you want it putting your piece up against it and then uh, pulling it back to the point of where you're going to make these these uh, marks so you carve off enough for whatever position you're in for that particular piece at that given time. So templates are really important. I'd, I'd hang on to them once you use them because you never know when you're going to use them again. So just finishing up this little corner piece. I'm going to go out and cut it. Looks like I could cut a little bit more off on this top piece. So it's about a quarter inch. I'd like to have that 
that room against this shower pan. So I'm gonna cut a quarter inch off of here. All right. in so putting those tabs on each side of the walls to sort of hold this together until i get the next step done which is drilling down into those one by aluminum trusses that are under the subfloor so those are really anchor the next step which is sort of putting the erector set together of uh, 80 20 um, and that'll absolutely anchor the floor so it won't won't move as i'll be drilling down into the floor and securing it to the uh, those aluminum one buys, as I said. So let's finish this floor out. We're almost done. All right, hang on to your scraps. I keep saying that, hang on to your scraps because I'm gonna take this scrap, which I used from that section on the other side of the wheel well, and make a um, corresponding piece for this side. So it really only has to be where this cut this is exactly the width I'm looking for so it's wherever that cut matches up which is about right there so get my pencil scraps are okay here I think as I've said before because in this case on this side it will There'll be a, an electrical uh, area, so I don't have to have pretty long, um, you know, cuts, so to speak. So it's just fine. And that looks like it fits nicely. Although, yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of a close connection here, but that's okay. Because I'm saving pieces. And, uh... That'll work great. All right, so on this one, I've lined this one up where it's gonna click in up here. What I wanna do is mirror this line right here. I'm gonna bring it out as though I'm cutting the whole diagonal, but I'm not. All right. Okay. That looks about right. So what I know is right at the end, to the tune of approximately, oh, about an inch three-eighths up, I'm going to go to a straight line. So inch and three-eighths up. So those are the final marks. It's actually this longer one and this angle. So I'll cut that off and uh, I'll cut a straight line here so I preserve this piece and then make my angle cut. All right made that cut Let's see if it uh, fits in here this one's gonna have to come up until I get wow did I miscalculate I mean that's a huge miscalculation in terms of length I mean, it fits where I want it to fit. <laughs> but it just means I'm gonna have to cut this little piece. I mean, check that out. I don't know how I screwed that up, but everything is manageable. So let's get it here. And then let's put this one in.
that one works. I'm going to leave that one right there. All right, that's done. Well, the wind has decided to pick up here in uh, North Dallas. So there's going to be a little background noise from the wind. Perhaps a whiny dog or two. Using the template, I got the wheel well on the passenger side just about done here. Had to cut it a couple times, but it's looking good. How did we do? Uh, let's see. It's pretty close. I'll get it in the slot first so you can Sorry. slide it. Down she goes. one popped in um, I don't need to overthink it too much here because there's gonna be a water tank water tanks gonna sit there and then there will be more uh, uh, plumbing mechanicals back in here and this will be closed in so it doesn't have to be perfect but at the same time you know you need to try to make it look uh, respectable There's nothing to snap it into. It just has to butt up against that one. And then I do want to put a spacer on it. I may just glue this down. I may just glue both of these down because there's no, technically there's nothing that's helping to lock them in and they'll just go loose on a, on a bump, what have you. So, A little bit of polyurethane will get the job done, I bet you. Final corner. And this looks like it's going to be a hand draw, which would be something.
All right, here we go. Final piece of the puzzle. Yeehaw! That could be a little cleaner. I could probably cut a little bit more off of that one, but you know what? I think we're going to take a look at how this looks. Yeah. It's going to need to be glued. But that's it. Job complete. Let me get a little light in here and let's see what the final, final project looks like. All right. I've come to find out that a uh, yard clipping weed blower is terrific for clean out of your van. <laughs> pretty good fits in there good no big bumps or bruises pretty easy work I've never done it before but pretty easy work I have to say here's a good look at it from this side looking pretty good clean all the way around really pleased with it like the color pretty simple for somebody who's never done it before I say simple um, once you get the hang of it it goes pretty at a pretty good pace all right that's a wrap hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little something uh, please send those comments in please hit that like button and uh, would love to have you as a subscriber on the channel all right be good bye bye